One and two, there we go. Folks, good morning and welcome back to the second floor here at the Grand Ballroom of the Weston Hotel. We are set for our Coastal Division coaches and players this morning and this afternoon. We will get rolling with Miami and new head coach Mario Cristobal. As we had our routine yesterday, if you would, even though you may have a relationship with the player or coaches, uh, please raise your hand, identify yourselves and the agency that you are with. We ask that you do stand so that we can catch you for the network as well. We will start with questions in the room. We will go to the very back, uh, to the right. Coach, your first question will come. Just follow the aisle. When the microphone gets there, we will stand and deliver. We'll have about 15 minutes with Coach and five minutes for each of our players. Morning, Coach. Mike Barber from the Richmond Times-Dispatch. I'm curious for a new staff, what is the value of having a returning quarterback what information can you get from him that uh, you might not have access to otherwise? Well, good morning. Appreciate your question. Well, uh, when you're a new staff, there comes or change comes with it, right? And change isn't always the easiest thing to get accustomed to. So when you're in a program like Miami and you get to have um, these unbelievable young men uh, and you spoke about or asked about the quarterback in particular, you know, being the most important position on the field in terms of operating an offense, right? Uh, it's a tremendous blessing. Uh, we've, we've made it no secret. We recognize instantly and from far away, because you obviously you watch college football at every chance you get, is that, you know, Tyler Van Dyke in that quarterback room is really, really special because uh, you have a natural leader that's one of your hardest workers and competing to be recognized as the hardest worker that demands as much of himself as he does of anybody else. and. Uh, that type of mentality and that work ethic is also displayed in the classroom and the way he approaches community service and everything he does. So it's a tremendous benefit, uh, a huge asset for the university and the program, and certainly makes the adjustment a lot, uh, a lot more simple. Coach, to your left, the third row. Bob Holliday, WRL.com. Coach, as you came back to your alma mater in the uh, offseason and assessed the program, what did you find lacking, and what did you feel good about? Well, I don't know if we find stuff to be lacking. I think uh, I, what I found really impressive was that we brought in a, a regiment that was very really demanding, and these players attacked it and approached it with a no-nonsense mentality. Uh, and it demands, I'll tell you, it, it demands absolutely every ounce of what they have on a daily basis. And not only did they attack it, they excelled in several aspects of it, and we got better. And that's critically important, right? Because your season is going to be a direct reflection of your off season. So it's a great start. Uh, there's still, you know, we've come a long way, and there's a long way to go. But honestly, I'm just very thankful that they allowed us, as a coaching staff, to come. Whether I played here or not, there's still change, right? And there's a generational gap there. Uh, that we're very blessed and thankful and honored that they allowed us to bring in a regiment that pushes the way it does and that all they did was approach it with a great mindset. Coach, to your right, second row right at the aisle. Morning, Coach. Yeah. Uh, Jeremiah Quimby, Legacy Maker Sports Network. Uh, retirement of the turnover chain. A lot of fans are, you know, they're doing their stuff on social media. I'm sure you had a reason. The question. Why are, Why did we retire the turnover chain? You know, I think probably the media's put more thought into this than, than I have. Um, we just really focused on getting better as a program and have focused on technique, fundamentals, regimentation, academics, strength and conditioning, sports science, community service, and that's what the focus has been on. Um, it is not a, uh, a shot or a uh, form of disrespect to anybody or anyone. Certainly, you know, history is history. And whether it's positive, whether it's inconsequential, whatever it may be, it's still history and part of your program. We're just uh, moving in a direction that, you know, right now doesn't involve it. So um, that's really the best way to address it. But, you know, it's put it this way, it's been, uh, we've been working so hard and paying attention to so many other things that are, in my opinion, much more critical to winning football games and having success that it really hasn't been a uh, a subject or a topic so but you know so you know we won't be using it so you guys okay with that okay we good now we could 
everybody got the, the chain stuff? Okay. All right. thank Coach, you. thank you. To your right, fifth row, gentlemen standing. Joe Marino, Draft Network. Coach, given your background with offensive line, I wanted to ask you about your impressions of Zion Nelson. And, you know, he's been a mainstay for this offensive line for years to come. Just your thoughts on where he's at in his development. Explosive, um, really impressive athlete, great balance and body control, heavy handed, light feet, uh, great knowledge of the game, great feel for the game, understands leverage, you know, can get that second foot in the ground because dig his heels in the ground and get his hands inside and unlock those hips and go low to high. He's an impressive guy. He really is. And uh, he's very, he has a, a very strong appetite to get better. He, he allows himself and wants to be pushed. He's always trying to find extra work. And he is joined by a lot of other guys that uh, on that offensive line that have the same mindset. So between him and the rest of those guys, really excited about that group and the team in general. But uh, we, he has a super, super bright future. Coach, to your left in the first row, right in front of you on the edge. Coach, Dan Tortora, Wake Up Call, DT.com. Welcome to the conference. Thank you. Uh, to take a look at the fact that you're coming into a conference that's going to have this model of divisions for one more season and then switch to the 355. just what you can say about this season having divisions one more time around and what you think of that 355 model moving forward. Well, it seems like an effective, a potentially effective model. When they run the numbers, it seems like over the years there's that much difference of what would have been a division model versus a non-division model. Um, you know, it's where I've just been spent five years at a place where you had to win your division before you advanced and it meant a lot you know it meant a lot to program so that adjustment and what it means i'm not sure yet it seems like the results for the most part end up being the same so uh, i think uh you know that'll have to run its course and take a, a couple year cohort to figure out exactly all right how does that really impact what we're trying to do coach turning back to your right about the eighth row in the middle as on hunch warchant.com coach we hear so much about culture changing I mean, is culture merely habits how long does it take to change a culture and is a new coach arriving isn't that the sign of the culture changing well i mean we're real simple i mean these i think these guys will echo that you know we always hammer home how you do anything is how you do everything and that early is on time right that's going to be the most important factor in being successful and being productive you got to show up and showing up early also shows a level of mental intensity that something is important to you Right? What's, uh, what's more disrespectful than showing up late? Right? What's more disrespectful than, than not paying attention to get ready to do your job? Right? It shows something like that would show a lack of mental intensity. So, the way we, uh, for us, there, there really are no little things. If it's a thing, it's a thing, and things are important. They're all big things. So, uh, these guys, they, they're made of the right stuff. They really are. Our job is to provide a blueprint that demands every ounce of everything they have as it relates to academics, football, community service, just doing the right things. And it comes with discipline, you know, and discipline, I, I've yet to see a good football team that didn't have discipline. And there's, there's so many things that are going on that are really, really positive with our program. You know, people have asked about challenges and change this and change that. I don't, I don't like to think of it that way. I like to think of it as opportunity, you know. Miami's been an unbelievable program for a long time. And, you know, we have an opportunity this year to get better and start elevating things to a certain standard as well. And that's the way we look at it. That's the best way to honor the past, and that's the best way to go forward. So all our focus is on us right now and getting ready for camp to have the best season we can. Coach, to your left, third row. Coach uh, Brian Murphy, WRAL. Uh, Commissioner Phillips and other coaches have called for a national standard uh, for NIL. I wonder your experience with NIL in this first year and what you'd like to see moving forward. Well, I think that uh, it's, it seems pretty obvious that as a university, as an athletics program, that our, our student athletes have done really well with NIL. Um, as a coach, you're not allowed to really delve in it. You know what I mean? So, but since it is part of the changes in college football, and it is a constitutional right, you know, we have a positive mindset towards that. And we're also very fortunate to be in arguably the best city in the world and one of the more prominent and growing cities in the entire world as well that's that's just constantly ascending so all that is helpful along with prominent alumni that you know could be supportive in a role where nil is a real positive thing and i know our guys have learned a lot and have benefited a lot from it and i think 
as we get to know more about it, and I think that's what everybody really desires, just a little bit more clarity so that from a direction standpoint, we can all understand it better to maximize it, but at the same time, make sure that the educational aspect is real, that we're providing a better path for a better future. That's what it's about, right? All the other stuff and the noise around it, I don't, I don't really get into that. It's still about these guys and their future. I know when I was a student athlete, I would have loved to have had it. We didn't. But I know that the experience as a Miami Hurricane was a game changer for me. And it's a big reason why I'm blessed to have this opportunity to come back and why I jumped right at it. So now I have to make sure that I do everything for them to have the same type of game-changing experience. NIL is part of that now. It is. And it's a big part of it right now. So, but it's still about keeping the main thing the main thing. You just got to make sure that that marriage of, uh, of these different things is one that makes sense and one that is productive. Back to Dan right there in the front row to your left. Coach, when you talk about coming back, and like you said, it, it was something that you wanted to jump on to be a part of this university again, what feels the same and what's different? When you step back on campus and you look around, what are those similarities and, and what to you is, is changing at Miami? Well, the first thing, it still is a difficult choice, you know, because uh, when you're a coach, you spend so much time trying to get to year four, five, six, right? Because that's when your first recruiting class becomes junior, seniors, right, or move on. And that's what we left behind, you know, arguably, well, not arguably, the best pool of talent that Oregon has seen in a long time. Awesome guys and wishing them the best. Uh, when you come back, I don't get caught up in nostalgia theater. I don't because times change and, and things change. But what remains the same is that that green tree practice field, that the work done on there for decades, for decades, the best football players in college and professional football, blood, sweat, and tears out there every single day. The camaraderie of the alumni and the current players was something that was always really strong and was a big reason why I wanted to go to Miami. I did. I loved going to practice and watching all these former players come back. They looked like assistant coaches. I mean, they'd be jumping in there, coaching up guys, probably upsetting the coaches that they were teaching probably a little bit better than some of them. But it, uh, the, the amount of passion and true brotherhood behind it was something that I was really attracted to. I was attracted to the level of competition on the field. That field looked like game day. That practice looked like an absolute knockout, drag out championship game. And I love that, and I was attracted to that. And we want to attract guys that are attracted to that as well, and that understand the balance that comes with being a great student and being a great member of society as well. So, in terms of of chain, I'm, you know, I mean, I don't need a GPS to get around Miami. I mean, I, it's the only place in the world where I can just, you know, know every shortcut street, every crack in every street, where the one way stop sign, all that stuff. So, um, I don't know. I haven't had much time to focus on anything else except doing what we can to get our players to their maximum potential. Coach, we appreciate your time. You can switch places with your far eye if you like. And we'll get our redshirt sophomore defensive end up to the podium for about five minutes or so. Questions for our first student athlete of the day. Well, seeing none, Jafar, I, I am very interested. What is your attraction to snakes? Oh, man. Yeah, you know, I love animals since, you know, I was real young. Um, I just grew up, you know, South Florida kid, going out, catching lizards outside with friends. So it's just something, you know, I, de I developed as a, uh, at a young age and still love them to this day. So as a follow-up, is it hard to find roommates? Oh, no. <laughs> it wasn't too hard. You know, they were pretty accepting of it, you know. It wasn't too bad. Question from the room. We'll take it to the right. Jafari, uh, be about the eighth row. Gentleman now standing. AslanHunchofAndyWarChant.com. I asked Coach about culture and how long it takes for things to change for a team. I mean, you're an actual player, so is it begin day one? Have you guys bought in? Has the culture changed, or is that something that's going to take months, years, maybe even after you're gone to, to really take hold? You know, um, you know, since the first day the uh, new staff came, uh, I feel like everybody bought in pretty well. We got a group of hard workers over there at the U, so, um, you know, it, it just felt different, you know, walking around there. Um, it felt like, you know, Coach it just changed almost automatically. You know, everybody goes in there ready to work every day, same energy every day, just, you know, getting there ready to grind. Jafari, to your left in the front row. 
Jafari, Dan Tortora, wakeupcalldt.com. On that D-line, obviously Coach has been active in the transfer portal to bring in some depth there. What can you say about the newcomers that are coming into Miami and what that transfer portal could do for that line? Um, you know, we got um, a lot of talent, you know, from the transfer portal. A lot of guys coming in. We got some vets and some younger guys. Uh, I feel like everybody that came will make an instant impact on the D-line. You know, them boys came in, uh, them boys bought in the first day, boys came in here ready to work, ready to play, you know, ready to uh, go win some games. Jafari, to your left, third row. Bob Holiday, WL.com. Jafar, you guys were third in the league last year in sacks and second in tackles for loss, and yet that only led to the now-retired turnover chain coming out 11 times, and you guys were almost dead last in turnover margin. Can this defense force more turnovers this year? Oh, yeah, most definitely. You know, with the coaching we got here, um, on the defensive line, especially, and we got some great coaches. Um, a lot of guys got NFL experience. Um, a lot of guys came in, you know. I feel like we'll, be, uh, we'll, we'll improve very much, you know, in sacks, uh, target for loss, especially turnovers. You know, I feel like you know, everybody brought in, so, you know, we come to fall camp, working hard, you know, we'll have a great defense this year. Jafari, again, here from the podium, what have you been doing this off season to improve your pass rush for this season? Um, you know, with the new coaching, you know, we got, uh, you know, going there extra every day, you know, after practice, you know, and, um, after you had a long practice over there in the spring, you know, down in Miami, it gets hot outside. So I feel like um, running extra, you know, when you're tired, working on that get off after practice. So, you know, um, late in that fourth quarter, your legs still feel, you know, fresher than everybody else. Fill in the blank for us. The defense will be successful this year if... Fill in the blank. The defense will be successful this year if? Um, well, the defense will be successful, but, you know, I feel like relentless effort. Relentless effort, you know, you know, hard work will take care of itself. Other questions for our defensive end from the room? Well, if not, then I'll follow up with my last one. I asked this gently going back to the snakes that, you, um, that you're so fond of. If you could describe the characteristic of a snake, Compared to the way that you play on the field, what commonalities between a snake and the way you play? Well, you know, snakes always ready to strike, you know, always hunting for prey. So that'd probably be the biggest uh, similarity. I think that works for us. Uh, if you'll trade places with Will, we'll get our tight end up for a few minutes. Thank you, Jafari. We've got about five minutes with our fifth year senior tight end. Question from Will We will go third row to your left. Will, Bob Holiday, WL.com. You guys were two and three, and Tyler was put into the lineup at the North Carolina game. You guys nearly won that game, and you did win five of the next seven with him at quarterback. What does he bring to this offense? Yeah, I mean, I think when you guys, when you see Tyler, and you know, all of us see him, he's got that natural confidence. Like Coach said, he's got that natural leadership. Uh, he's a guy that you want to play for, that you know, guys rally around. Um, we're fortunate that we have him on our team because I wouldn't want to be playing against him, that's for sure. Um, but, you know, Tyler, just he's a guy. He's the leader. He's our guy. Um, so it's, it's easy to follow him. It's easy to want to play for him just because of how he is a person and how he is as a competitor. Will, to your right, middle of the section. Corlin Griffin with a three-point conversion. Uh, Will, so you're one of the best tight ends in the ACC, arguably one of the best tight ends in the nation, and you chose to come back to Miami. What played into you returning back to the program? Yeah, I think there's a lot left that I wanted to prove to myself. You know, um, there's a lot left that I, I think I want to, you know, go down and be remembered as, as a Miami Hurricane. So uh, this place is special to me. Um, you know, it, it would be hard to leave, and I just wasn't ready to leave yet. Um, I'm fortunate that I get to come back with a special coaching staff, special players, guys like Tyler, a uh, new offense that uh, I'm really excited to, to play in. Um, so uh, we've got a good tight end group, too, that I was excited to come back and, you know, uh, lead that. So I was really fortunate to be here for, for one last ride. Uh, just excited to make the most of it. Will, to your left in the front row. Dan Tortora, wakeupcalldt.com. He just said, you know, being a part of a team that has this coaching staff, when you have the opportunity to move on and move forward and not have to go through a coaching change, some people would take that road. Why did you want to be a part of this Miami team with this staff? 
Yeah, you know, when things were changing, we were kind of all scrambling. We didn't know what was going to happen. Um, Coach Cristobal came in, and you know, we were fortunate to get him. And then week by week, kind of just saw the additions that he was making um, and just gets you that more excited. So, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't want to play for anyone else from the last year. So really fortunate to have him have all the other support staff there because uh, it's something special. Um, you know, he's a guy that you want to play for, that you want to work for, and that you want to win for. Um, so couldn't be more lucky, more blessed to be able to play for a man like him. Will from the podium, is it more rewarding for you to break a run for Tyler Van Dyke or catch a pressure pass from your quarterback? Which would you rather do? Oh, sorry, can you say that again? Okay. What's more rewarding for you, breaking a big run for your quarterback, being on the lead block, or catching a pressure pass from him? Uh, you know, there's a Virginia touchdown that we had that I got to, I kind of blocked for him, and that was pretty rewarding. It was fun to watch him run. You know, people don't think he is as fast as he is, but he shows that he's got wheels. So that was a lot of fun, you know, to see him get in the end zone. Uh, I think that's more rewarding. Uh, watch your guys get in the end zone, celebrate with them, because that's what it's all about, you know, be there with your team. Other questions for, for Will from the room? If not, we'll ask again from the podium. You've got 34 games under your belt. What have you learned about yourself through your own football evolution? Yeah, I played a lot of football, um, and I think each year I've improved. I uh, learned a lot about myself, especially last year. Um, uh, you know, there's a lot to improve on, you know. Um, it, it takes a lot of hard work, a lot of focus. Um, and this is what it takes to improve, to, be, to better yourself, better yourself as a player, better yourself for your team. Uh, you just got to put the work in, you know, trust the process that the coaches put forth. Um, and it's been good. Like I said, I've learned a lot about myself, learned a lot about myself as a player. Um, and just decided to improve on that this year. One last question for you. There are some records you could break this year. Do you think about such things? Yeah, when it's mentioned, it's cool to hear. You know, as a kid growing up around Jeremy Shockey, Jimmy Graham, I never thought that one day I'd be playing here nonetheless you know, have the opportunity to break some records. But, you know, I don't focus on that. You know, we do what we do. We work hard. You know, things will take care of themselves with team success. You know, that could come, and that would be awesome. But uh, I'm more focused on, on the team getting to work for this season um, and more focused on winning. Um, and if I break some records while that happens, that's awesome. But more just focused on, on the team overall. Will, thank you. You can trade places with Tyler, and we'll spend the Thanks. remaining few minutes with our third-year sophomore quarterback. And we have a hand that is jutted up in the back of the room, almost finishing where we started with our first session this morning. So Tyler, follow the aisle straight up and to the right in the back. Hey, Tyler. Mike Barber from the Richmond Times-Dispatch. You heard me ask Coach, but what is your responsibility as a returning quarterback to help a new coaching staff kind of get established with the program? Yeah, for me, I would just say leading the team, uh, making sure everyone's doing what they got to do. You know, um, leadership is a big thing, uh, especially for my position. Um, it's all about impacting guys and making sure they've got to do what they got to do. So um, it's all about leadership. We're going to get the microphone still on the right side about midway in the block. Hey, Tyler, uh, Miles Williams of the three-point conversion. How fun is it for you going to be working with new coordinator Josh Gaddis? And as a quarterback, how difficult is it to understand a new system? Yeah, I love Coach Gaddis. You know, he's, he's bringing a lot of things that we never had last year. You know, coming from a lot of the RPOs around last year, we're doing a lot more uh, play action, uh, full field repass concepts. And I'm, I'm really excited for it. Um, he likes to, um, you know, utilize the talent we have, you know, the running backs and, and the, the tight ends to the best ability. So I'm, I'm really excited for that and uh, can't wait for it. To your left in the front row right in front of you, Tyler. Tyler, Dan Tortora, wakeupcalldt.com. You ended last season, the last four games of the regular season with over 300 yards passing and three touchdowns in each of those games in a season where you didn't expect to necessarily be out there as early as you were. So what can you say about what was clicking at the end of last year and how do you build on that? You know, I was, before the season, I always prepared like I was a starter. Always watching extra film, always doing what I had to do um, in case the opportunity came. So, you know, I think the biggest thing is confidence. You can't play football or especially quarterback without confidence. So, you know, that was the biggest thing for me. And I had my team, uh, they had my back. And, 
you know, we just rallied behind the entire team. Tyler, to your right, almost the far right gentleman just now standing. Tyler, uh, Ira Schofield with Warchant.com. When you got on the field last season, I think a lot of people were wondering why you hadn't been on the field before. Did, did something click for you once you got in the games? Were you, were you playing at that level in practices as well? Or did once you got the opportunity, did, did, you, did your play raise to another level? Yeah, I would say I, I improved a lot last year over the year. Um, I mean, like I said before, it's all about confidence and um, understand your capabilities and, you know, the team had my back. And, I mean, I thought I was practicing well, but um, I feel like when I, when I got on that field and, and got that confidence from my teammates and, and my coaches, you know, that was the biggest thing for me that changed throughout the season. Back to your left in the third row. Bob Holiday, WRL.com. The great Miami teams to the past had great run-pass balance. Last year, you guys were 12th in rushing. Um, do you feel like you can run the ball better this year? Or does it matter? Yeah, we'll definitely run the ball better this year. I mean, Coach Chris Ball did a great job of getting a couple offensive line in here and really emphasizing toughness and physicality. You know, I mean, at the end of the last season, we really had one or two guys that could run the ball, you know. And, and now we brought in another guy, um, a freshman, and uh, we got Don Cheney back. You know, everyone knows Rooster, so... I'm excited what the run game is going to be like. Uh, Coach Gaddis um, brought in a lot of gap schemes, um, you know, all that stuff. So uh, I'm really excited um, to really balance the, the run pass game out. Tyler to the right, dead center of the block. I'm Katrina Sacco with uh, Sports and Culture Media. You are a redshirt sophomore with obvious high draft potential. It's, so it's obviously hard not to look for it and anticipate what you have for not only this season, but your future. How much thought have you put into your future just you know, beyond this th season? I mean, honestly, I really don't think about all that. You know, I'm just trying to focus on the team and winning because without player success, you have to have team success. So. Um, as you can see, see last year, we were 7-5 and five, we only had one guy drafted. So, I mean, it, you have to have the team success to have uh, player success. Tyler, your last question comes from the podium. Off the field, what will you do to help your coach establish his program? I can get you. You know, I'll just say being a leader, um, getting those guys uh, to rally and everyone become a leader. You know, he always emphasizes discipline and, and doing the right things off the field. How you do anything is how you do everything, like you said. So whether that's showing up for class or uh, showing up on time for community service, you know, it's, you got to do all the details right, and, um, and then everything will come. Tyler, thank you. Miami, thank you. Good luck right. this season. Appreciate you. Folks, North Carolina's due up in the room at 1030. We appreciate all the early enthusiasm here this morning.